Welcome back to the Advanced Information System Security Managers course. Next, we're going to talk about some administrative activities as it applies to our security program. So let's make sure that you continue to understand these core definitions, especially when it comes to controls and countermeasures. Uh, controls, remember, defined as the policies, procedures, practices, and guidelines designed to provide reasonable assurance that business objectives will be achieved, whereas countermeasures directly reduce a threat or vulnerability. I know they sound the same, but there is a slight difference. When we break out into these control categories, there are several of them to identify whether or not a control is a deterrent control or a preventative control. Uh, perhaps we're using corrective or compensating controls or detective controls. It's important to understand the difference between each and when is the right opportunity to use them. The main reason for this is we, as information security managers, need to be aware of the various tools and processes for mitigating risk in our environment. Another key consideration to take in mind when it comes to overall control design is having that top-down risk-based approach. It has to have full management buy-in. In today's heated regulatory environment, controls and countermeasures are most efficiently approached in this manner. By applying common frameworks such as COBIT or the ISO standards, there are definite mechanisms of measures within each. So let's take a closer look at each one of these, starting with control strength. The strength of controls can be measured by the type of control being evaluated, whether it's preventative or detective, manual or automated or whatever, and it's quantitative and qualitative compliance testing results. The strength of the control can also be measured in terms of its inherent or design strength and the likelihood of its effectiveness. Looking at the control methods, security controls encompass the use of technical and non-technical methods. Technical controls are safeguards that are incorporated into computer hardware, software, and firmware. Non-technical controls are more management or operational based. Next, we have metrics development. There are a number of considerations when developing useful and relevant metrics, but as long as you stick to the rule of three, you'll be just fine. Who needs to know this information? What exactly do they need to know? And when do they need to know it? Keeping in mind that these metrics need to be able to provide relevant information at one or more levels, either strategic, management, or operational. The strategic metrics helps us identify whether we're on track and on target and on budget. Our management or tactical metrics help us identify the level of policy standards compliance and incident management and response effectiveness, as well as manpower and resource utilization. And our operational metrics, which are probably the most noticeable of the three, this is where we find things like open vulnerabilities and are we performing good patch management. Regardless of the metrics that you choose to employ, they all must have basically the same attributes, such as are they meaningful and manageable? Am I getting good, actionable results? Are they clear and unambiguous? And almost most importantly, are they accurate? When it comes to measuring the information security management performance as a whole, the information security manager must take the lead on the analysis along with any issues of information security governance requirements and compulsory and voluntary standards compliance, as well as financial, staffing, and other organizational constraints and assets, threats, and potential impacts. There's a lot that we're asking our information security managers to know and understand. Now you understand maybe why they're always so grumpy. Now, bear in mind that information security management generally includes a core set of common objectives, such as to minimize the risk and loss related to information security issues, and supporting organizational achievement of compliance, as well as maximizing the program's operational productivity and maximizing security cost effectiveness, not to mention the ability to facilitate effective, logical, technical, and operational security architecture.
knowing that these are kind of our guiding principles, there are several different approaches that we can take, such as a technical vulnerability management approach, or the loss prevention approach, or possibly a qualitative measurement approach, or a combination of any of them. Looking at the technical vulnerability management approach, it simply is how many technical or operational vulnerabilities exist, how many have been resolved, what is the average time to resolve them, how many have reoccurred, and so forth. Whereas taking a risk management approach, uh, we look at how many high, medium, and low issues are unresolved in the organization, and what is the aggregate annual lost expectancy. How many were resolved during the reporting period, and what is the aggregate annual lost expectancy that has been eliminated, as well as how many were completely eliminated versus partially mitigated versus the risk transferred out. By taking a loss prevention approach, we usually approach it with a few questions, like were there loss events during the reporting period? What was the aggregate loss, including investigation, recovery, data reconstruction, and customer relationship management? How many events were preventable? And what was the average amount of time taken to identify the loss incident itself? And finally, our qualitative measurement approach. The qualitative measurement approach is concerned with do risk management activities occur as scheduled and have incident response and business continuity plans been adequately tested and are assets, inventories, custodianships, validations and risk analysis up to date as well as do executive management oversight and review activities occur as planned. As you can see, the range of possible metrics are quite broad. That's why it's important for the information security manager to choose the metrics that's going to be most beneficial to the overall program. For instance, when measuring the effectiveness of a technical security architecture, you might look at the individual technical mechanisms that have been tested. The security architecture is constructed of appropriate controls and control mechanisms are properly configured and monitored, as well as ensuring that all critical systems are streaming events for live action. When measuring the effectiveness of a management framework and its resources, you might look at things such as tracking the frequency of issue reoccurrence or monitoring the level of operational knowledge to capture and disseminate across the organization. Since there is such a wide range of metrics to employ, it's important for the information security manager to choose the ones that are going to be most useful, most valuable to the program itself. For instance, when measuring the effectiveness of a tech technical security architecture, you would want to look at the individual technical mechanisms that have been tested, and ensuring the security architecture is constructed of appropriate controls for the organization, as well as making sure that all critical systems are streaming live events. To look at the overall effectiveness of a management framework and resource, there we would want to track the frequency of issue reoccurrence and ensure there's ongoing monitoring the level of operational knowledge to ensure that we are capturing all incidents as they happen for later dissemination. We also look for clarity and completeness of the documented information security roles and information security functions incorporated into every project plan. To measure the overall effectiveness of the operational performance, this is where we take a look at the average time to detect, escalate, isolate, and contain incidents. What is the quantity, frequency, and severity of incidents once discovered? And the percentage of systems that have been audited within a certain period of time. Since this concept of a fully integrated security department is somewhat new, it comes with some understandable challenges, such as inadequate management support they just don't understand, or inadequate funding, and absolutely inadequate staffing. All these aspects need to be looked at and evaluated to ensure the continued success of our information security program. So that's going to do it for section three. Hang in there, only one more section to go. In our next section, we're going to take a look at incident management and response. I'll see you there.